Okay, so we're going to be making a sort of simple jetpack joyride kind of game. Now, I'm going to try and go through this as like a nice intro, so it should be quite basic. Let's try and keep it quite simple for now and just sort of get used to some of the start stuff. Um, so all I've got here is you're just going to need to create a third person game. And, you know, we've got it here. Just a simple third person um, game. Alright, so, when it comes to making a game like Jetpack Joyride, and, you know, other Endless Runners, the thing about them is actually the character doesn't move, it's actually the world around the character that moves, and, you know, that's why those games allow for, like, procedural generation, and each round to be a little bit different. So we're going to mirror that, and we're going to use this we're going to use this time to set up some just basic controls just to get get things working all right. Um, so first of all, we're going to, need to start by creating a camera. Now, it's worth noting that my screen might look different to yours because I've just gone for the classic Unreal Engine, um, Unreal 4 layout, but yours might look like this. You can press Control Space Bar to bring that up if you want to, or, um, you know, I just maybe it might work just using UE4 Classic, so that way we've got all of these pinned, so we can use them. All right, so we're going to go up here. I'm going to search for a camera. Now, this camera is just going to be sat around here and placed in front of where the play is going to start. Now you might want to pull it back a bit, raise it up, and once you hit, oops. Once you play, it won't work because we need to tell it to work. So with your camera selected, what we want to do is on the right side in the details section, scroll down so you see auto activate the player. I'm going to set that to player zero. So now if we press play, you can see we've sort of got a view with our player. Now, you actually want your play to probably be a touch further on the left hand side. So like that. And my camera's probably a little bit far away. So I'm going to pull it back a bit. But there you go, something around there probably looks alright. Cool, so now we've sort of got the camera set up, let's tweak the player a bit. So, in the content folder at the bottom, in content, I'm going to go into third person, blueprints, and I'm going to go to third person character. I'm going to open this up. Now we've got a lot of cool input systems here, we've got camera input, movement input, jumping, all of that stuff. Let's delete it, because that's not a good place to start learning, is it? So, we're just going to start by creating the hover system. So, let's um, think about how we're going to do this. Let's, let's start by creating a tick. So, an event tick is an event. This will fire every frame. So, this is going to fire all the time. Now, we don't want the player to go off floating all the time, so we're going to use something called a gate. Now... A gate, much like a gate in real life, or like a flood gate, would stop something from entering it. Be this, you know, water. And only until the gate is open will, will you know, this fire. So the moment the gate is closed, so nothing that we do after will actually work. So we need to open the gate. And the way we're going to open the gate is just right-clicking in some space and typing in spacebar. This spacebar will be our hover button for now. And we might come back and set up proper inputs for this later. But for now, spacebar will open it, and when we let go of spacebar, it's going to close the gate. So it's closed. This will no longer fire. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. From this point, we're probably going to want to look, let's launch a character. So type in launch character. Now we've got our who we're launching ourselves. Uh, do we want X, Y, or Z? Well, we want Z. So let's just put a number in there and see what happens. And let's go ahead and test it. So I'm just going to press compile in the sub corner. Move this window out of the way a bit and press play. So now I press space bar. Okay. It launches. It probably launches too high. So let's tweak that a little bit. Um, I don't know. Let's just go down to maybe 20 and compile it and test it again. Ooh, that's not too bad. Um, it's not too bad. Another value you might want to tweak is inside this viewport, if you select character movement, you 
get something here called gravity scale, which in a moment is set to 1.75. But what would happen if it's set to 0 0.5? So we've got a lot more of a, a floatiness about it. Maybe it's too floaty. I'm not sure. I'd like you to sort of spend a bit of time and figure out you know, what number is going to be best here. So think about your gravity and think about this up force. Tweaking those is going to be the key to making sure this is fun. So you see the lower your gravity will be, the more you might want to tweak that launch value. But for the most part, that doesn't look too bad. Now, we could clamp our movement, but what am I actually going to do? Just for the sake of now, we might clamp our movement later. I might just stick a cube above his head. Let's see if this fixes it. Let's make that cube a little bit bigger and move it so it's above the character's head. So that, you know, stop it from kind of exiting the viewport. Yeah, back there. So just for now, I'm being a bit naughty, and I don't want the character to exit the screen, so I'm just throwing a quick cube up there. And what we can do as well, with this cube selected, is over, oops, on the right hand side, is we can scroll down until we see rendering and look for actor hidden in game. So when we press play, the cube should now be invisible, but it won't let us exit any higher. Look at that, perfect. Let's do one more quick tweak. So we want the play to look like they're running. When they're on the floor, we want them to run. And the way we're going to do this is going to affect the animation. So let's go to our content folder and let's look for characters. Uh, mannequin, animations, APB Manny. And let's open that up. So this is our animation blueprint. And it might look confusing, and you're right to think it's confusing, because it is confusing. But we're not going to worry too much about all this for now. What we're just going to do is we're going to go to the animation graph, and we want to affect its locomotion, and particularly its idle. So I've just double clicked into all of those. So it's my local locomotion and then idle. Now, this is telling it what animation to play here. So I'm gonna change that and I want it to actually play the running animation. So I'm just gonna grab this running animation and I'm gonna feed it in there. So let's hit compile. And let's go ahead and press play. So you can see it's running and then we jump, we land, and it's running. And cool. All right. So we're starting to get a little bit of what our game's going to look like. We've got the basics down. I think that'll sort of do for this video. Next, let's look at probably setting up the background.